Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Welcome to it. Great to have you with us. Welcome. It's a double welcome there. Now triple, I guess. Uh, <laughs> triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Pat unleashed on Twitter. Jeez, another assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump yesterday. Yeah. Around two o'clock in the afternoon, he's golfing, and uh, somebody's pointing a, a high-powered rifle at him. Now, I guess there's confusion as to whether or not the guy actually took shots. But apparently the Secret Service fired at him and apparently didn't didn't hit him, but uh, which is unfortunate. Um, but another attempt was made on Donald Trump's life. Here's the uh, sheriff's briefing yesterday to the media on this second Trump assassination attempt. All right, so when we get done, think about your questions because we're not going to take a lot. And keep them to the information that you heard. Don't get into what ifs. And because of this, we're not going to go there. All right? So Uh keep that in mind. Sure. And we'll be good. So here we go. All right. 1.30 this afternoon. Call came out. Shots fired. That was called in by the Secret Service. Because we're in constant contact with them all the time. We were notified of that. And we had units here that immediately sealed off the area. Fortunately, we were able to locate a witness that came to us and said, hey, I saw the guy running out of the bushes. He jumped into a black Nissan, and I took a picture of the vehicle and the tank, which was great. So we had that information. Our real-time crime center put it out to the license plate readers, and we were able to get a hit on that vehicle on I-95 as it was headed into Martin County. We got a hold of Martin County Sheriff's Office, alerted them, and they spotted the vehicle and pulled it over and detained the guy. After that, we took the victim, I'm sorry, the witness that witnessed the incident, took, flew him up there, and he identified as the person that he saw running out of the bushes that jumped into the car. Mm. Now, in the bushes where this guy was is a AK-47 style rifle with a scope, two backpacks which were hung on the fence that had a ceramic tile in them, and a GoPro, which he was going to take pictures of. So those are being processed right now. The Secret Service agent that was on the course did a fantastic job. What they do is they have an agent that jumps one hole ahead of time to where the president was at. And he was able to spot this rifle barrel sticking out of the fence and immediately engage that individual, Mm. at which time the individual took off. So that's what we know about the investigation. We have somebody in custody right now that is a potential suspect. we got a little bit more work to do on it. Mm. But as we usually do, as soon as we decide that we're going to book him into the county jail and the charges that he's going to be booked into, we'll get those to you and we'll get a picture of him and we'll Mm. get you his background. Okay. So now I'm going to turn it over to the representative of the Secret Service. All righty. Mm. And I'm, guess, I'm guessing we're going to get some super valuable information from the Secret Service <sighs> official. That uh, I'll bet that was riveting. Uh, how come you don't have that, Chris? I'm sure that was... I mean, there was so much information there that the sheriff covered it. No, oh, okay. And the suspected gunman is, uh, what, Ryan Wesley Routh? Yes. Is that right? Okay. Well, yeah. And this is interesting. Now... Right before the show started, um, we were listening to uh, <laughs> Ali Beth from previous. You know, they we did little highlights for uh, Blaze Radio. Blaze Radio, mm-hmm. and she was talking about the fact that, man, this is something <laughs> I had never heard. Yeah, I hadn't either. Chat GPT doesn't know about any assassination attempt on Donald Trump. Yeah, we were sitting here listening to it, and I said. Come on. What? And you tried it, And right? I tried it, and I typed in, tell me about the assassination attempt on Donald Trump. Now, I fully expected it wouldn't have anything from yesterday. Well, yeah. Right? So, yeah. So I thought, okay, but I mean, it's been since June. Right. So uh, so it's been two months. Uh, so since, right? well, it's it was been, July, July 13th. Yeah. Yes, so over it's two been over months. two months. So here's what ChatGPT said. Uh, there is no verified record of a serious or widely publicized assassination attempt on Donald Trump, the former what? U.S. president that resulted in harm to him or a major security breach. 
However, there have been incidents involving threats or attempts to breach of security, and then it went into but it's unreal. Yeah, it went into some uh, old thing from 2016 or something that I actually had never heard of. But then I went all the way to the bottom here. It goes, if you're referring to a specific event that happened after my latest information update, which was September oh, September 2021. Oh, I was thinking it was September 2024. But still, it's yeah, been so updated it since then. Yeah. Has it not? No, because uh, ChatGPT is not connected to the internet. So... Uh, it's not connected it's to the not internet. It's not connected to the internet. Is, so, that, is that like a safety protocol? I think it's like the whole thing that, you know, Glenn worries about, you know, yeah. all that stuff. But my chat GPT on my computer mm. knows about all both assassination attempts because oh, I it taught does. it. Oh, I you put, taught it. Oh. I said, hey, I need you to learn this. So they didn't teach it. Hang on a second. They haven't taught it yet. Well, yes. How is that possible? Hold on. This was kind of a joke that Incredible. Brad, Brad Staggs and I talked about how the internet, you don't need your world book encyclopedias. And so mm -hmm. I went and I grabbed uh, uh, the topic we were talking about and it didn't have the latest information that we know of stuff. Well, it was printed in 1988. Yes. <laughs> what is the difference between what ChatGPT T is right if they're not going to constantly update right. it like in other words there, there's if definitely a risk in letting the left feed this this ai stuff mm -hmm. but at the same time you need information if True. you're not going to hook it up to the internet so it's continually updating then uh then you better update the information, <laughs> update information. manually yes yes right That's i weird. mean that only makes sense yeah but my chat gpt he's a he's up all up to date all you have to do is just huh. hey learn this and then Give him the sources and he'll learn it. Yeah, it's a he. That's so you mine know. Is a he. You know the gender. Would you name mine, him? Okay. Would you uh, name him? Bob. Bob. <laughs> Bob. What up, Bob. Is it Chat GPT? Yeah. Or is it okay? It's Chat GPT. It's Bob yeah. GPT. Uh, so <laughs> nobody has taught not yet Chat GPT. Nope. About the Donald Trump assassination <laughs> okay. attempt two months ago. Or I mean, certainly it doesn't have yesterdays. No, it right? definitely so does not. Wow, that, that, that's that's amazing. That, honestly, to me. that's pathetic. What's the point of why is this thing on It's my amazing. Phone? I mean, I don't know how much I want these AI units to be learning, but um, it should know that. Which is the difference between Grok, which is the X version of AI. Um, is that Grok, connected to the internet? That's connected to the internet yeah. because it uses okay. everything X. Excuse okay. me, I would like oh, a, okay. I would like a point of clarification here maybe mm -hmm. maybe you can explain this going off of and this is the same thread here really <clears throat> after it said it hasn't been updated since september 2021 i know right. for a fact the atlanta it's braves won the world series on november 2nd 2021 uh, okay. so i typed in who won the 2021 world series the atlanta braves won the 2021 world series defeating the houston mm. how is that How's that possible? How, how does it know that if Somebody it hasn't taught been updated? It that. Someone taught it that. Somebody taught it the... Okay. What, so it knows the winner of the World Series two years ago, almost three years ago, but it does not know that Donald Trump so uh, had an assassination our, our attempt on it. Help, 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 me, help me to understand <laughs> this, okay? And then I'll, I guess I'll let this go. Uh -huh. But are we to conclude that the radical leftists that run ChatGPT put in this bland information about which team won the World Series mm -hmm. and has completely, intentionally avoided entering in information about Donald Trump's assassination attempt in July? Yes. I'd say yes. The answer yes. to that is yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. what, what's the point of this? Tool? I don't know. Honestly. Control the narrative. Control the narrative. Thank you. You got there. Yep. Yeah. That's where we're at. Control the narrative. Wow. Nicely put for a brand new citizen. Oh, thank That's you. Because think about it. Right it now, good. the new iOS 18 <laughs> that uh -huh. comes out on the um, iPhone 16 uh -huh. is connected to ChatGPT. Oh, really? Which is one of the reasons why Elon does not like the new iPhone. Right. So wow. it is about to control the narratives because the new Incredible. iPhone is going to have it already in the system. Yeah. Well, this shows that it, it lies. Have it, you? it lies. I haven't been updated since September 2021. Liar. You got the Brave stuff in November 2021. Right. So it's obviously been taught to lie as well. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, that's we got that going for us. But this guy, man. Um... Interesting. Interesting background. Now, the guy said he was, the sheriff said he was going to update us on his background and all that. Well, now we have some updates on the guy's background. Okay. Uh, and one of the updates is really fascinating that uh, the shooting suspect was in Ukraine fighting for uh, the Ukrainians against <laughs> the Russians in 2022. Check this out. 
Tell me who you are and why are you here? Uh, 56 from the U.S. US uh, from North Carolina originally. So I live in Hawaii now. So flew all the way from Hawaii here. So the question as far as why I'm here, to me, you know, a lot of the other conflicts are gray, but this conflict is definitely black and white. This is about good versus evil. This is a storybook, you know, any movie we've ever watched, this is definitely evil against good. I mean, okay. we're battling a situation here where, mm. you know, the U Ukrainians and the rest of the world are caring and kind and, mm. and generous and caring, kind, and generous. And, They're almost a perfect people, really. It sounds like it's just it? a matter mm -hmm. of, huh. you know, we need to stand up for that. That is the sure. most important thing in the world is just yeah. to show human yeah. beings that we're kind and we're caring and that we take care of one another and mm. the world is united so that we I feed see. each other and make sure that you know, we, we all move forward as, as mm. one collective whole unit. So, <laughs> you know, we feel the pain of, of mm. one country's failure and their conflicts, and we enjoy the successes of, of other countries that are doing good, and, and we all mm. work together. And for some reason, Russia does not grasp this concept that we're, mm. we're all one unit. Oh, we wow. have to get along and work together and... and, and Got to get along and be normal human beings. This is 2000. Was he trying to get along with Trump or work together? How did that work? It seems mm -hmm. asinine that we have a, a leader in a country that does not understand the concept of does of being of being nice, nice to one being another, generous, sure, and being kind. <laughs> and just the basic guys going really deep, that, isn't he? That are required by human beings these mm -hmm. days. It blows my mind. Blows his mind. Wow! Wow! So he's uh he's so into Ukraine and their situation that he actually went over there and fought for him. Okay, all right, good for him. Became a mercenary, went to Ukraine, and I guess fought against uh, Russians invading Ukraine. Good for him. Mm uh hmm. This guy's interesting. Um, yeah, very. I have a story here from uh, Wired magazine about how uh, in two thousand two. In uh, North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina, he got pulled over by police during a traffic stop. Uh, bottom line is he ended up barricading himself for three hours, hmm. and he had a fully automatic machine gun. Oh, wow. This guy, oh, my. What is this guy's deal? Did he have a uh, permit for that? Because those are illegal. Uh, no, let's see. He was charged with possession of mm. a weapon of mass destruction, they, they okay. described it as. Didn't have a valid driver's license, resisting, delaying, obstructing law enforcement. Um, hmm. It just says, while the disposition of the case isn't entirely clear, Ralph did plead guilty to carrying a concealed gun. Hmm. Uh, now, how does that guy, who had a fully automatic machine gun, hmm. get his hands... On the weapon, the, uh, the AK-47 that he had yesterday. Huh. Wonder how that, that is happened. interesting. Hmm. There's a lot of uh, seemingly unanswered questions there so far. There are a lot. And thankfully, Ron DeSantis has already said the state of Florida is going to do their own investigation. Good. Because that needs to happen. I mean, this guy... But they said that the golf course wasn't entirely secure because Donald Trump's not a sitting U.S. president. Did we yeah, not right. learn anything from Butler, Pennsylvania? No. No, we didn't. Oh, it's madness. Guy's also a Democrat donor. Um, he's got a history of donating to Democrats. Uh, when he was engaged by federal law enforcement officials, he ran and got into a car and drove off. Fortunately, that witness, as the sheriff said, uh, got a picture of his plates and his car. And But the FEC records indicate that he donated exclusively to Democrats when he lived in. Hawaii, uh, small dollar donations sent through the Democrats' fundraising platform, Act Blue, were earmarked for <laughs> Democrat presidential candidates. Always. Beto O'Rourke, uh -huh. Andrew Yang, Tom <laughs> Steyer, <laughs> Tulsi Gabbard, and Elizabeth Warren. It's always Jeez. Act Blue. That's interesting. Too. I swear, what is the deal there? It's almost like that's where... The feds get their groomable assets. Yeah, at does the donor seem list at Act Blue. Just my opinion. Uh, his son, who's 35 years old, um, said that yeah, my dad hated Trump, <laughs> as all reasonable people do. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Hmm, that's we, interesting. We know who too. raised him. Yeah, we it sure was do. Definitely the dad.
This was the first I've heard about it, he told the Daily Mail. Was my father shot or injured? Said his father hates Trump as every reasonable person does. I don't like Trump either. But he said his dad is not a violent person and couldn't believe his father would target the president, former president. He's my dad, and and all he's had is a couple traffic tickets, as far as I know. Well, that and the oh, wait. machine gun. You're right, dude. You need to spend some time talking on the back patio with your dad. Yeah. Holy crap, man. He's got a story for you. That's crazy. I know my dad, and I love my dad, but that's nothing like him. Hmm. Mm-hmm. No, it seems like it is. Mm-hmm. Seems like it actually is. Do we know how long um, Mr. Routh was uh, in the bushes? Have we heard no, that? we don't know. I've not heard. No, I've not heard. That's interesting. I, I'd like to know that. And I'd also mm-hmm. like to know because Trump's golf round wasn't on a public schedule. So yeah. was he just hanging out in the bushes waiting for days until Trump came back to play golf? Or did he get a tip? Mm, interesting. Don't know the answer to that question. I don't know that anybody does but, but, yet. But you know what also is interesting is, uh, and I know we'll get to this later, is that uh, ABC News whistleblower affidavit uh, dropped just about the same moment that this assassination attempt occurred. Oh, so my gosh. That's interesting. Hmm. I don't know why that happened. Wild. What a wild coincidence. Huh. That's fascinating. Life is just one coincidence after another, isn't it, Pat? It sure is. We'll get to that anyway. <laughs> we will uh, talk about the affidavit that dropped uh, on ABC News and what they had scheduled and what they had planned for the debate with Kamala Harris uh, coming up. First, let me tell you about uh, the fact that we live in a society that's constantly uncomfortable, irritated, and on the edge. Everything costs more. And you're getting less and less for your money. But thankfully, there are companies like Undertack providing exceptional quality. Men's basics for your hard-earned dollar. Uh, Their socks are made of battle weave wool. That's five times stronger than Merino. Their ring-spun cotton hoodies and joggers are dangerously comfortable. And every Patriot needs the EDC t-shirt three-pack. Undertack isn't your typical men's boxers. They're made with Modal, which is 50% more moisture-wicking than cotton. It's antibacterial, and it's way softer. Plus, they now have a women's Undertack short for the tactical lady in your life. Go to Undertack.com, Undertack, Undertac.com. Get 20% off site-wide when you use my offer code PAT20. You'll get exceptional comfort, twice the guarantee, and at a fraction of the price. And they donate a portion of their profits to organizations actively in the fight against human trafficking. Stock up today. Undertack.com, spelled under T-A-C. Undertack.com. Offer code PAT20. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. So, yet another attempt on the life of Donald J. Trump and yet another opportunity for the media to blame him for it. It's it's not their rhetoric. It's not the rhetoric of the mainstream media that has continually dehumanized this man for the last almost decade. It's not the fact that they call him exactly like Hitler as we'll share with you uh, later on. Um, It's his fault. It's his fault. Here's Lester Holt. Uh, This is... This is Jeff Fisher's boy. Yeah, I I invited Jeff to come in this morning and defend Lester Holt in in what you're about to hear. And you see, see there's no defense. Didn't show up. Uh, Here's Lester. Today's apparent assassination attempt comes amid increasingly fierce rhetoric on the campaign trail itself. Mr. Trump, his running mate, J.D. Vance, continue to make baseless claims about Haitian immigrants in Ohio. Wow. Okay, so it's his fault because they said something about cats being eaten. Yeah, and and, and by the way, Lester, I I hope you're tuning in uh, later today when we play uh, citizen after citizen after citizen from Springfield, Ohio, that uh, doesn't sound like it's baseless to me. Mm. Ass. God, it's incredible. It's incredible. Uh, but this is where we are. Yep. We're in opposite world right yes, now. Yes, exactly. 
MSNBC also. So it's not enough for NBC and the main channel to be saying it. Uh, here's MSNBC blaming Trump for his rhetoric. Uh, do, do you expect there to be calls from within the Trump campaign to do that? Um, because he's going to reach out to his uh, supporters and say, let's take this down. Uh, we do not know, again, the source of any gunshot or gunshots. We don't know who's responsible for this. Uh, the whole thing has yet to be 100 percent confirmed mm. uh, from start to finish all how right. this all played out. Keep down But do you expect to hear anything from the Trump campaign about toning down the rhetoric, toning down the yeah, violence? Yeah, you don't want to hear positive for a you don't expect to hear anything from the Harris campaign on toning down the rhetoric? It is Trump who has been shot at here now multiple times. But he's the one? <sighs> All right, keep going. Mm. Uh, the former president. Well, Alex, remember back to the assassination attempt on President Trump's life and how, you know, there was talk of a new tone and then the re the Republican convention was by Trumpian standards muted and it did seem like he was, you know, just trying to take it down a few notches, but then by the end of his convention speech, you know, we were kind of back to where uh, we started. So, I don't know how long this could like you know this moment of mm. unity for the country where we come together and we say i don't want any political opposition to be under threat of violence it's not okay any threat of violence you know we don't want i i would love for us to have a unity Beautiful type point. moment but i think <laughs> okay. it's probably going to be pretty fleeting as we've seen no, in the past these people suck so My hard gosh Man, I mean, that, it's, it's incomprehensible. You're right, though. I mean, so all they're despicable. doing is they're not saying anything about those on the left. No, no, no. It's it, perfectly fine. It's, Whatever's being said on the left is absolutely fine. It's and, look, look at how Donald Trump was dressed. He had this coming. I mean, that that's what they're saying. Yeah. They, yeah. When they even believed that an attempt was made. They're, they were trying to discount <laughs> the fact that it was even an attempt. I can't. I can't take it. This is... <clears throat> wow. Then we've got uh, Dep Democrat Representative Jasmine Crockett uh, saying that MAGA is a domestic threat. When was threat. this, Chris? Was this, this was the yesterday? morning of... Yeah, so this attempt. was before the assassination yes. attempt? Hmm. Oh. Huh. Huh. I talk about the fact that mm. when we swore in finally in January that we swore to defend against those that are coming against us, whether they are domestic or are international and right now I feel like MAGA in general, they are threats mm. to us domestically. Oh. And we see it time and time again. Mm. And I think that's why you see so many national leaders, whether they're Republicans or Democrats, coming together to say there is only one person qualified to be the commander in chief, and that is Kamala. Hmm. So you wouldn't think that uh, somebody's trying to eliminate that domestic uh, violent threat, uh, would you? Would you? Hmm. The more they say that, that doesn't that doesn't inspire anybody. Yeah, stop inciting violence, leftists. My God, stop it! And 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 they are doing exactly what we always say: the left always does what they accuse the other side of doing. And they're sure doing they that are right inciting now. Inciting the violence. Mm. I just wow. Beside myself, I, there's no denying that. If this was if this was being directed at Democrats. If there were assassination attempts on the president or Kamala Harris, the vice president, where would they be directing all of the all of the th accusations of dangerous rhetoric? It'd be going to Trump and, and MAGA. Now, the fact that it's being directed at Trump, they're still accusing him of being the source. <laughs> it's wow. Again, they've got it both ways. As they do on every single issue it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what happens what reality is they they just make what they will out of it it's pretty amazing and they have so much cover in the media that they can get away with it when it's only talk radio and maybe occasionally fox news that are going against the prevailing theories it's pretty tough to get that message out to people Especially when you're talking about trying to influence the left because they live in their little bubble 
all they watch is MSNBC, NBC, CBS, ABC, CNN. And so that's the only spin they hear is from them. Oh, man, it is really shocking what is happening now. I never would have, I don't know, I would never have guessed that we could get to this point. It's absolutely astounding. But we are absolutely in the opposite world. Watching football over the weekend um, and saw the new Harris, Kamala Harris campaign ad. She actually claims in the campaign that Donald Trump wants to raise taxes. Mm. What? That's, I mean, she's nuts. And and this is frustrating as hell because you see her commercials on every freaking game and no Trump. She is taking all of her bad policy positions and just attaching them to Trump. And then she takes all of Trump's good policy Mm -hmm. positions and claims them for herself. No tax on tips. Uh, we're going to continue fracking. We're going to build a, a wall on the border. I mean, we've gone even that far where they've thrown that out. Okay, well, that's fascinating. But again, it's it's all opposite world. Didn't Trump just come out and say he wants no tax on overtime pay? So when does she latch on to that one? Oh, probably this week sometime. Maybe today. But seriously, you get the... Uh, <laughs> this is this is madness. So um, I've got the four box of NFL games yesterday, and I just see on game after game the uh, Kamala ads come up. <laughs> oh, I, I can't and you're stand like, it. Everybody see, and I'm and I'm sitting there. I'm looking at the. This is how much of a nerd I am. I'm looking at the map. I'm like, okay. I mean, Ohio's not going to go for Kamala. That's what, this game because it was. The, I, I remember specifically looking up the Cleveland Jacksonville game. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, it's Ohio and North Florida. Nah, that's fine. Whatever. But it was everywhere. It was. You know, like her yeah, ads, they have so much money to spend. It is yeah. sickening. Yeah. And I I don't know if I've seen a pro-Trump ad Uh-oh. anywhere. It's pretty just, amazing. Just on social media. Wow. So they need to get on the stick here. Um, even though... There's, uh, we'll tell you about some new polling information that shows that her debate performance, all of the ads, everything they've done so far has done very little yeah. to move the needle for her. So there's that. We got that going for us. Uh, even the Taylor Swift endorsement <laughs> hasn't really kicked her into gear. You know, fortunately, um, 12 year old girls can't vote. Oh. Are you sure? Yeah, pretty okay. sure. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay, who knows? Uh, but according to an ABC News Ipsos poll, uh, apparently uh, 6%, 6% of people who were polled are more likely to vote for Kamala Harris because Taylor Swift endorsed her. <laughs> However, 13% are less likely to vote for her. Yeah, that's funny. Her because of uh, the endorsement. Yeah, this was going along really great. And then yesterday mm. morning, boy, yesterday was such a news day. Trump tweeted out his, uh, I hate Taylor Swift. Do we ha- have that? Uh, that didn't That didn't help much. I no, don't that's, that's not helpful. But There's... that was quickly buried by the assassination attempt news of the day. Yeah. Uh, I mean, why? Why do you need to I, do that? Bro, I don't know. What is the point I to do that? not know. That's... <sighs> I don't understand. We have to play the Megyn Kelly clip later of her. Uh, she was, because you know how Glenn showed up at the uh, Tucker Carlson event uh, in Salt Lake. Mm-hmm. I don't know where this one was, but Megyn Kelly was there with uh, Tucker, and she had this two-minute rant on Taylor Swift. It is. That was the one in Dallas, right? Oh. Is that where she was? Is that where that was? I think so. Okay. No? Yes? I don't know. Well, it's a great clip that we have to play later. Yeah. It's good. All right. We'll get to that and so much more. We've got that affidavit. <sighs> On, uh, yes. on ABC's helpfulness toward Kamala Harris. We'll share that with you as well. They're talking about the fact that that affidavit was going to come out over the weekend. It certainly better come out, and it did. It did come out yesterday morning. We'll share that with you as well. Coming up. Pat Gray Unleashed. Got some tweets.
tweets here. Carl Smith tweets, We must be making progress toward a fair election since Democrats have turned to trying to kill their opponent. Yeah, boy. Yeah, they couldn't jail him yet, so now they're trying something a little more um, radical. And the bastards won't stop till he's dead, I'm afraid. Uh, Dirty Mule 94, a deranged pro-Ukrainian leftist, tries to assassinate Trump, and one of the first things MSNBC asks is... Will Trump tone down the rhetoric? This, my friends, is the thought process of the mentally unhinged. No question. Lone Wolf 2965. So the would-be assassin tried to escape on 95, 95, 95? Uh, No, I I, uh, would would, would just um, Uh, really like the, mm -hmm. the 95... (laughs) <laughs> 95, 95. Love that, man. Beautifully put. Yeah, who doesn't? I mean, everybody does now. Uh, Patriots Beagle 2. Nothing like low information AI. We know who the chat GPT is voting for. Right? <laughs> no, no. So from Carol remarks, I'm confused about chat GPT then. If everyone has to train it to fit their personal narrative, then what's the point? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, this is just a beta right. version, people. They're just trying to release it. And then once it's uh-huh. full, then uh-huh. it's connected to the internet. And then... Yeah, people. Yeah. Chill, people. Hey, chill, yeah. people. <laughs> so when is this going to happen? I don't know. You don't know? That's Glenn. <laughs> All right. When hey, the my, end of hey. times come. <laughs> uh, well, um, I got news for you. <laughs> Check your watch. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Tim McCormick. If you're paying for it, ChatGPT does know current events, and it does scrape the internet when you see oh. it. Oh, for, I guess you have to you pay, pay for it. it. Oh, I don't pay for it. Oh, you don't pay for it. <laughs> no. But you do teach it, and you I do are, teach it. is it connected to the internet? Yours? Yeah. Well, of, it's, okay. it's connected to right. the local. Like, it won't search itself, but it will. Mm. But it will what? <laughs> you don't know. It's do very you? difficult to explain. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because right. if I do something like mm-hmm. suicidal, it'll say, oh, you can't do that because it violates our protocols and guidelines. It mm. just it won't, like, I think I'm it. more terrified of a, uh <clears throat> AI that is being trained by Chris Cruz than an AI that's being trained by the Internet. What does that large. mean? <laughs> <laughs> Most of it's for this show, doing research uh-huh. for this show. Okay. Oh, all right. Well, I don't want to read the whole story, so I tell you, hey, learn this. Give me the cliff notes. No, now I feel that. better. See, now that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel better now? Keith, because, yeah, man, I'm... Nothing makes me feel better. My mind was just put at ease, <laughs> so... <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> all right. Good. Exactly. Uh, I like this, too. Uh, speaking of a non-biased media... CBS's Gail King uh, assured us that they are impartial. <laughs> yeah. Well, she, now she's yes, she's a Kamala Harris donor. Okay. Donor. But but she's completely impartial. And you know, cool. What irritates me about this is they claim the impartiality, and they're obviously not. Whereas. You know, people will say, well, you guys aren't impartial. Well, no, we're not. We tell you where we stand, though. We're not continually lying to you. You know where we're coming from. You don't with CBS when they're telling you, no, we're just news people. We're just journalists. We, we've got no dog in this fight. And you, it's a lie. It's a complete lie. So they try to pass everything off as news when it's oftentimes their spin or their opinion. So it's really dangerous and despicable. Now, over the weekend, uh, we were waiting for the ABC employee mm-hmm. to uh, release the affidavit on ABC News um, and the big debate last week where the accusation was that Kamala had sample questions in advance and that she had assurances she would not be fact-checked, but Donald Trump would be. I mean, that's despicable and uh, completely out of bounds, and everybody knows it. But does anybody care? This was released yesterday morning. Have you heard about it anywhere else? 
Well, I've seen it. Uh, it, it there's a couple of international uh, websites I saw yesterday had it, and then Breitbart actually has it this morning. So we're getting there. Mm, okay. Yeah. I, I actually feel well, it like makes this CNN. Will. I feel. I feel that. You I feel I like actually, it will. I feel like it will. I don't know why. Don't ask me a follow up. I just feel like this will. Okay. Well, this affidavit was released and uh, starts out state of New York redacted date. September 9th, 2024. Um, yeah, before being, before the debate. That's right. very important to note here. Being duly sworn, do hereby make the following statement under penalty of perjury. My name is, and then that's redacted, I reside at, redacted in New York. I've worked for ABC News for over 10 years in various technical and administrative positions. Since the acquisition of ABC News in 1996, I've observed significant transformations in the nature of news reporting at the organization. These changes suggest a shift from unbiased reporting to a model influenced by external factors. I mean, that's kind of weird, though. You've only worked there 10 years, but you're yeah, referring how are, to... I was wondering that myself. Changing in the last I guess just 30? from watching it? Yes. It's kind of weird. For the record, I do not endorse Donald Trump in his capacity. As a candidate for president of the United States, the intent of this affidavit is to address concerns regarding perceived biases within news reporting within my employer's debate that will be hosted. On, so will be, again, this happened before right. the debate last week. September 10th was the debate. This is dated the 9th. <clears throat> so here's the observation. Number one, uh, since the debate of President Trump and Vice President Harris had been announced to to be broadcast on ABC, various members of staff had expressed hope of a debate where issues that were important to everyday Americans would be discussed. And there had been promises made that the candidates would be held to firm discussions regarding their proposed policy stances and that the debate would not deteriorate into an ad campaign where both candidates would simply make blanket statements without specific policy or explanation as to something redacted there. Point number two, political position clarification. Many employees of ABC who were looking for a fair and honest debate questioned the clear bias that is well known throughout the company. <laughs> it is common knowledge that debate moderators, as well as chief executive officers of my employer, are well known not to support Donald Trump. Boy, that's for sure. David Muir, uh, through a study by um, MWC, I think it was, uh, had 100% positive coverage of Kamala Harris. 100% positive? So everything she's done has been good. Right? They, got, they had nothing negative to report on her. Whereas with Donald Trump, his coverage was 93% negative. <laughs> that shouldn't surprise anybody, but it's it's... Pretty startling um, that it's that bad a situation at ABC. Um, but he continues, executive officers of my employer are well known not to support Donald Trump. This led to several employees speaking up in regard to how fair the debate was going to be. We were given assurances that the debate would be fair and neither the Harris campaign nor the Trump campaign uh, would um, experience an unfair advantage. Number three, concerns regarding journalistic integrity. It is my belief that contemporary news organizations, including ABC News, no longer adhere to impartiality. The influence of commercial interests and substantial donors appears to affect news presentation, resulting in selective reporting and biased narratives. I have personally witnessed news stories being cut from programming and not reported at all due to the influence of Certain corporations linked to our parent company. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Parent Trump. company being Disney. Mm -hmm. Number four, observations pertaining to debate fairness. I have noted specific instances related to the debate between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris that raise concerns about procedural fairness. The specific instances of perceived bias are as follows. The Harris campaign received particular accommodations, including but not limited to the providing of a podium significantly smaller than that used by Donald Trump. I don't know how that's an advantage. Oh, it's a visual advantage for someone watching at home that mm. makes makes it look like they're the same height. It's just they're playing optical I illusions see. here to see. Okay. Look. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, so, and assurances regarding split-screen television mm-hmm. that would favorably yes. impact Kamala Harris's appearance relative to Donald Trump. It was agreed that Trump would be subjected to fact-checking during the debate. That wow. certainly happened. While Kamala Harris would not face comparable scrutiny. And that oh. absolutely is the case. You can't deny it. Donald Trump is right when he says, can't if this deny is it. accurate, ABC should lose their license, their <clears throat> broadcast license. Yes. And it is accurate. I mean, we know that happened. This was done via multiple communications with the Harris campaign, whereas the Trump campaign was not included in those negotiations. To my understanding, any rules negotiations and conversations pertaining to the debate should have had both the Trump and Harris campaigns involved. The Harris campaign uh, had numerous more calls regarding the debate rules without the Trump campaign aware or on the call. Wow. The Harris campaign was provided with sample questions that, while not the exact questions, covered similar topics that would appear during the debate. Yeah, this is is exactly what we talked about when you compare my um, insider with the reports of of ABC News saying, we did not give the questions. Well, my guy said that um, you were given um, an outline. Yeah. So now they could parse their words, which is exactly what the whistleblower here is saying. Furthermore, the Harris campaign imposed restrictions on the scope of questionings, including no questions regarding the perceived health of President Biden. And to my recollection, there were none. Nope, there were not. No inquiries related to her tenure as Attorney General in San Francisco. Oh, 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 wow. No questions concerning her brother-in-law, Tony West, who faces allegations of embezzling billions of dollars in taxpayer funds and who may be involved in her administration if elected. Wow, what is happening? Holy cow. Uh, Number five, internal organizational climate. I've observed a pronounced bias against Donald Trump within ABC News. Duh. Uh, (laughs) Employees expressing favorable views toward him experience significant concerns about potential retribution. Number six, purpose and documentation of affidavit. This affidavit is executed to document and provide transparency regarding the issues of fairness and impartiality in the debate process and broader concerns about journalistic integrity at ABC News. Wow. Then the affirmation of documentation. This affidavit has been signed and notarized on September 9th, the day before the debate, 2024, to ensure that the allegations set forth are formally documented prior to the debate before Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. In addition to notarizing this affidavit, I have sent a certified letter to myself, postmarked September 9th, 2024, which will remain unopened for any future investigations. I have also dispatched a Federal Express package containing this affidavit, Mm. sent on September 9th, 2024, delivered to my residence on September 10th, uh, which will remain unopened for potential investigative purposes. Furthermore, I have sent a certified letter to Speaker Mike Johnson. Oh, he'll get to the bottom of it. Oh, you... uh, Yeah, you don't have to worry about that if he's on the case. Sorry. Uh, To establish a record that the correspondence was sent before the debate commenced. I mean, he's taken all the precautions here to show that this is a real and actual development. Additionally, for further investigation, I have secretly recorded several conversations that will prove that the Harris campaign insisted upon not only the fact-checking of Donald Trump, but also insisted on what questions were not to be asked under any circumstances or else the Harris campaign would decline to participate in the debate. I make these statements under the penalty of perjury and without coercion of any kind. And then on and on with the legalese. Interesting. Wow. Okay. So there there you go. go. Yeah. So there it is. Where's the Trump press conference uh, holding up this? That's got to be coming. (sighs) Please do it. Uh, you got to do that, right? You have to. This has to be brought to light on on more than Breitbart or your typical conservative publications. This has to be everywhere. CNN should pick this up. This is a real problem. When CNN did an actual debate that was, you know, fairly decent, wasn't the, the Trump-Biden debate was CNN, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah. They did a good job with that. God, I don't know. It's yeah. incredible. Uh, All right. According to a new report, President Biden has signed off on a highly classified plan 
that shifts America's nuclear strategy to focus on China as a nuclear threat and to prepare for the possibility that the communist nation could team up with North Korea and Russia against the United States. Isn't that fun? If that doesn't make you nervous, it probably should. Are you and your family prepared for whatever comes around? There is something you can do to ensure that you and your loved ones have medication on hand when it's needed. Why would that be a problem? Well, because China manufactures almost all of our medication. Uh, So, get the Jay's case. This is a packet that will allow you to start stocking up on medication right now so that you're prepared. The Jace case is a personalized emergency kit that contains essential antibiotics and medications that treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. It provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. You just fill out a form online, just really easy. Uh, Then a doctor will review it to make sure that you're not allergic to any of the medications in it. You can get some add-on options too, like EpiPins and Ivermectin. So go to jace.com, enter the promo code PAT at checkout. You'll get a discount on your order. That's promo code PAT at J-A-S-E, jace.com. All right. So you're not going to... There we go. You're going to play the thing. All right. Okay. So um, a lot of uh, outlets like OutKick and uh, Daily Caller are reporting that... uh, in hindsight, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? The re- 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 um, flashing back to a recent fluff piece um, uh, in the L.A. Times, mm-hmm. where they sat down. This reporter had uh, breakfast with Lindsey Davis, and it was after the Biden Trump debate, and she basically admitted, "Yeah, we're going to make sure it's different the next time." Um, uh, yeah, and it just reports on how. Uh, in the weeks leading up to the debate, everyone involved at ABC played out various scenarios in table read like sessions to ensure their ability to fact check in real time to avoid a redo of Trump's debate against Biden. Um, Davis said herself said people were concerned that the statements were allowed to just hang and not be disputed by the candidate Biden at the time or the moderators. But apparently, apparently we may have audio recordings of some of these table sessions that, that, that have ABC news individuals. You know, if you're going to fact check one, you have to fact check the other. Right. You have to. In fairness, and she lied 25 times. We pointed it out. Verifiable, provable lies 25 times and nothing. Not a not a peep out of the moderators. Despicable. Wow. All right. More coming up. Pat Gray Unleashed. Pat Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Got some tweets here. High Plains Stranger tweets, maybe the left should tone down the assassination attempts. (laughs) It's a lot to ask. It's a lot to ask, though, isn't it? <laughs> uh from Aaron Grenade or Grenade Democrats keep using the guns they claim to hate so much to mm. attempt to murder conservative mm. politicians Scalise Trump Trump again the guns aren't the disease democrat policies and ideologies are the disease uh from unreasonable yes. uniparty monger unity means agreeing with the democrats it's really true. Mm-hmm. That is what it means to them. Hang on, what is this? For sure. Chris, you sent me this. Uh, Robbie Starbuck reporting. Yeah, Robbie Starbuck reporting that the... Uh, attempted Trump attempted assassin, Trump, Ryan Rouse. Yes, Ralph. he wrote a book calling... Uh, it's not a, just about this, but in the pages, he calls for Iran to assassinate Trump oh in gosh. a book that he wrote. While praising John Kerry for the Iran deal? This guy's a <laughs> lunatic. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He calls Trump yeah. an idiot and says he perpetrated January 6th. I mean, mm. where's he getting all this information from? Where's he getting that kind uh, of... Uh, is not possibly got some of it from no. 60 Minutes, is uh, it? Oh, Didn't they go I ahead agree. with a big report on January 6th? They sure 6th? did, right after the Trump assassination oh. attempt. Yeah. 60 Minutes decided to continue mm. as with the programming. And here it is. Democracy stopped for about six hours 
The vote was counted at 3.44 a.m. Oh, wow. With two weeks until oh, Inauguration oh, no. Day, Don't it was that. the Trump Justice Department that set the standards for the prosecutions. Decisions were made by mm -hmm. career prosecutors who work at justice for years, regardless of who the president might be. The career prosecutors quickly realized that you needed guidelines in place, determinations about who was going to be charged, who wasn't going to be charged, and what they would be charged with. That process started in January 7th, 2021, during the prior administration. To this day, we continue to use guidelines that the career prosecutors put in place during the prior administration. Right. And oh, how did they guide Pause it for a you? sec. What? Okay. The prior administration that had been voted out of office, so I'm certain that Donald Trump played a key role in all of that, right? He was he was no doubt working hand in hand ding, ding, ding. with the DOJ. What garbage. <laughs> How stupid do you think we are? All right, continue. <laughs> We're generally focusing mm -hmm. on of the thousands of people who you could potentially charge that day are mm -hmm. people who actually entered into the Capitol, people who engaged in violent or destructive behavior, the, people who illegally carried again. fire. All right, so why did you prosecute so many others who, A, didn't even go into the building, huh. and B, if they did, milled or paraded, but didn't do any violence, didn't do any the destruction, state. they didn't do anything wrong. They walked into the building that we pay for with our tax money. Thank you. Yeah. <sighs> and, uh, and I'm sorry, this whole thing Jeez. was so... It continues to be just this flimsy garbage thing. On my podcast on Thursday, I sat down again with FBI whistleblower Steve Friend. We've talked about on this show about that couple in Alaska where the FBI goes in, holds them basically captive in their own home, and it turns mm -hmm. out they had the wrong people. Well, the thing that Steve mm -hmm. informed me of that I was not familiar with until Thursday when he said that, yeah, that whole thing was based on, he said, I know the agent that signed the affidavit to go and do this in Alaska. Um, they got a tip from a flight attendant that, yeah, I saw a couple and I think that her jacket was brown like the lady at the Capitol that you're looking for. And that's why that couple in Alaska went through hell in their own home. Our government is absolutely insane. They're out of control. Out of control. And it's it's madness. Wow. And this just goes to prove it with the 60 Minutes thing. Uh, yeah, let's see them the rest here. Other weapons on Capitol grounds and people who helped others to get into the Capitol building. You're not charging everyone who was there that day. That is correct. We have turned down hundreds of cases where the FBI is saying there is evidence here. It's your determination. Like a brown jacket. You think this should be prosecuted. And why insane. would you turn them down? Because they don't fit within the guidelines that the career prosecutors have been using, or we don't think that there's sufficient evidence to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. Pause U.S. Attorney. Also, there were 300,000 people there. They can't <laughs> convict. They can't try every single person. It would be they want to. impossible, but they'd like to. Mm -hmm. You bet they'd love to. This is just such BS. All right, let's see if we can get through it. I doubt it. <laughs> Dave's told us that January 6th charges range from mm. essentially trespassing mm -hmm. to the most serious, seditious oh. conspiracy. Oh, wow. So seditious conspiracy is a Civil War era statute mm. uh, that deals with um, mm. basically using force against the government to interfere with the operations of the government. Fourteen have been convicted of seditious conspiracy. Mm. One, a militia leader, got 22 years, the longest sentence of all. All of the trials have been in right. open court in right. Washington. That guy wasn't even there, right? He was in D.C. He was uh, or, or he was in Baltimore. Baltimore, yeah. Yeah, he was yeah. in Baltimore. In a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. He's not even there. But he's a Busted. militia leader. Busted. Wow. All right, have we finished this? Or is there more? At once the longest over. sentence of all. <laughs> all of the trials have been in open court in yeah. Washington mm -hmm. before judges or juries, the defendant's choice. But more than 900, 80%, have pleaded guilty. And we've seen the defendants in January 6th mm. take full advantage of all the protections afforded under the Constitution. Oh to me, that's gosh. the I picture wanna... of due process. Wow. Holy cow. How long is the delay in there? 
<laughs> but Holy that happened right God. after the assassination with him. They went with programming. What a massive crock of crap that was. He was trying to shop here. <laughs> That's amazing. Jeez. <sighs> also, over the weekend, uh, there was a rare sighting of um, Joe Biden. Oh, what they are who now? knew? Who Is knew? That what he they was, are now? He's still president. <laughs> well, yeah. He, okay, I didn't, I didn't know that. So, okay, technically, yes, <laughs> but he yeah. doesn't like the the duties that come with the job, like oh. answering questions from the press. Really pissed him off. Hmm. All right, here he is getting pissed because he was asked yeah. a question. Seven. Clip seven. Mr. President, what do you say to Vladimir Putin's threat of war? You be quiet while I speak, okay? Mm. That's what I say. Wow. Good idea. No. What do you say to Vladimir Putin's sir? threat of war, sir? It's a well, serious threat. Well, you gotta be quiet. And I'm gonna make a statement, okay? Wow. Wow. All right. Anyway. Uh, anyway. Okay. Look at everybody in the yeah. room is yeah. like, Awkward. "Jeez, dude, calm down." <laughs> what okay. do you say about Vladimir Putin? Vladimir Putin's threat of uh, <sighs> wider war. I say you be quiet till I say a statement. That's what I say. Woo! And the reason he's asked that is because we're sending them long-range missiles. We want World War Three. This administration wants World Desperately, War Desperately, for some reason, it's like they, a parting gift for Donald Trump's presidency. I mean, Putin has said, "Okay, long-range missiles. If they can." You know, if they provide long-range missiles, we're we're essentially at war with the West. Because those are the things that that Joe Biden himself said. We're not going to give them um, the uh, what was it uh, the jets that are equipped, yeah, right, right, uh, and we're not going to provide for long-range uh, missiles. And right, because because his justification was this means World War Three started with tanks, if I'm not. <laughs> mistaken That's right it's we we provided them with tanks, tanks when we said we weren't going to we provided them with uh fighter jets when we said we weren't going to and we are now providing them with long range missiles when we said we weren't going to wow. plus it all started before that with telling them we will never include ukraine in <laughs> nato which we are now trying to set the stage to do just that as well I mean, everything we have said along the way, we've gone back on. Yes. Yes. And Scott Ritter now is saying that we are, uh, the U.S. Mm -hmm. and Russia, um, the threat of nuclear war between these two countries at, at its highest since 1983. And I don't want that. Yeah? Do you? That, uh, yeah. Do you let, want let me, that? I have, you know, I haven't thought about that. Okay. Uh, no, I, actually, I don't. No. Okay. <laughs> So that was kind of a snap decision on uh, your no, part. I didn't you really sure think about this it? Through. <laughs> Good call. You know, it's it has nothing to do with liking Putin or Russia right. or wanting them to win or any of that. Holy crap. Or blaming us for things that are contributing to this. It's about starting World War Three. Yep. And potentially starting a nuclear war. And sending our boys and girls into a meat grinder for something <clears throat> that is not in America's interest whatsoever. Nope. nope. It's in the it's in the Biden family's interest. It's it's in uh hiding the the, the deep state's sins over there, uh, hiding their interests and it's for mm -hmm. their interests. Absolutely. But not for our country. This is insane. Oh, man. I mean it just doesn't it just doesn't end. Happy Monday. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing, too, that these Democrats are such war hawks now. Well, it's equally weird that you conservatives are such doves. Where did you become such peaceniks? I don't know. Since we just got out of a 20-year war with Afghanistan, and before <laughs> that, endless war in Iraq, and before that, I mean, I... Well, I'm yeah. done with it. It's follow the money, Pat. It's follow the money. It's everything with with politicians, but mm. in this case, specifically the Democrat Party. And you talk about mm -hmm. why are they so different. It's the same reason why they're um, on the side of big pharmaceutical companies now. It's because yeah. they made a deal with the devil to right. pass Obamacare, and now they love big pharma and anything that they roll out for us. And it's the yeah. same thing with pushing this narrative in Ukraine and why we have to go to war and have to continue to supply this follow the money. Also, at the Congressional Black Caucus event the other night, uh, Biden actually said, he actually had the giblets to say, 
people are better off yeah. under his administration. You know it. We went big and we went bold, and yes, the result, yes, we are better <laughs> off today than we were four years ago. Holy crap. What? With a straight, <laughs> well, mouth open face. Uh, uh, yes, we are better <laughs> off today than we were four years ago. Ugh. Does anybody buy that? Is there a single person in this nation <laughs> that believes we're better off today than we were four years ago? Everyone knows that's not true. Everyone. He also called out extremists. Oh, good. Somebody's got to. Yeah, yeah. They're old ghosts in new garments. Oh, gosh. Trying to seize your power. Okay. An extremist <laughs> coming for your freedom. Mm-hmm. Make it harder to your vote. Kettle? And have your vote counted. Closing doors of opportunity, attacking affirmative action, and the values of diversity, equity, and inclusion, banning books, oh, banning books, breaking history. Oh, good gosh, I can't I mean, that stand entire... it. I can't stand it. First, what, how long was that clip? 30 seconds? The first 20 seconds of that is exactly what we say, mm -hmm. of the left accusing the right of what the left is doing. Yep. Trying to make it harder for you to vote. Yep. Uh, coming for your freedoms. Uh, what was the other stuff? I don't know. Play, play, just play that first 20 seconds. Just imagine this is someone on the right talking about the left because this would be accurate. First 20 They're seconds. Old ghosts. Old ghosts. The new garments. Old ghosts. Okay, okay. Trying to seize your power. Seize your An power. extremist mm -hmm. coming for your freedom. Yep, that's the left. Make it harder to your vote. Yep, the left. And have your vote counted. Yeah. God, gosh. Closing doors of opportunity. The left. Attacking affirmative action. All right, we're good. <laughs> Actually asking you to present an ID. Oh. You are you going to vote? <laughs> Try to make sure that you are who you say you are when you vote. You shouldn't have to do that. We want a lot of non-citizens <laughs> to vote for us. We want illegal aliens to vote for us. Wow. <laughs> he, they continue to get away with that garbage, though. And nobody, nobody opposes voter ID. Nobody. And that's all they've got on the making it harder to vote thing. To throw it at Republicans anyway. Jeez. Well, they, we don't want dead people to vote either. Hmm. Yeah. So oh, if you're dead, we'd like you to get off the voting rolls. <laughs> I mean, we're having story after story after story uh, flying below the radar. Alabama, Oregon, um, I forgot where else it was. Where they're they're finding illegal aliens on oh, the yeah. voter rolls. Oh, I mean, just many Texas. Many Texas is a big state for this. Yeah. Surprise. We predicted that. Yep. Yep. This is not I mean, there's tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people who died a long time ago that are still on the voting rolls. You don't want to clean that up? Really? And then illegal aliens, because in a lot of states now, as soon as you get your driver's license, and there are states giving driver's licenses to illegal aliens, and then they have the, uh, the automatic enrollment. Yeah. Into uh, voter registration. Yeah, they don't care if the they don't care. person shows up on election day. They just need the name for the voter rolls and therefore the ballot that mm -hmm. they can then manipulate with that person's name on there. And I love how the Postal Service is now coming out to say, look, we got all these mail-in ballots. Don't be expecting a... And then we've got all of these crazy uh, uh, rules and stuff we have to follow. You can't be expecting mm. a winner, y'all. It's going to be weeks before you know who wins the presidency because I'm sorry, it's just too My much gosh. we got to take care of. Boy, they are. They think we're stupid. They're, st they're setting it up, And though. they are setting it up, absolutely. Jeez. All right. Are you tired of wasting your time, your precious time, on mind-numbing TV shows? <laughs> I've heard from so many listeners who ask for advice on how to spend their time wisely. Why not use it to improve yourself and those around you? Now's the time and your big chance to dive into topics that really matter, like history, economics, literature, and the meaning of the U.S. Constitution. Hillsdale College is offering over 40 free online courses on these timely subjects. You can study the works of C.S. Lewis, the Book of Genesis, The Rise and Fall of the Roman Republic, or the Ancient Christian Church, all for free. Personally, I'm recommending right now the course Introduction to Aristotle's Ethics. 
How to Lead a Good Life with Hillsdale President Larry P. Arn. If you've ever wondered what it means to live the good life, this course is for you. You can explore Aristotle's teachings on human nature, virtue, and happiness, all at your own pace. Go to hillsdale.edu slash pat today to start. It's absolutely free and really easy and available anytime. That's hillsdale.edu slash pat. Pat Gray Unleashed. All right, CNN's biggest deal today is the Trump tweet or truth or whatever he put that out on. (laughs) I hate Taylor Swift. Why? What is the point of that? Please, Donald, help me. Help me help you. (laughs) Help me help you. Don't be doing that. Please. (laughs) By all that is holy, why would you do that? And after the story was breaking in his favor, the support was going his way, not yes. Kamala's way after right. Taylor Swift's right. endorsement. There's no re- ignore Taylor Swift. Yes. She's meaningless in this election. Did 6% say, yeah, that made me more likely? Yes, they did. <laughs> But 13% said they're less likely to vote for Kamala Harris because of her endorsement. Ignore her. Be presidential. I. Uh, so what about this next tweet that he tweeted out no, after the wanna, assassination? Is there another attack? one? Oh, no. Oh, come on. Can What's the next out? one? Oh, yeah. 0 for 2, baby. 0 for 2, baby. <laughs> 0 for 2. Uh, <laughs> love he it. Send that out right after the assassination attempt. 0 for attempt. 2. That's good stuff. Yeah, I like that. You that like that one's one? funny. Okay, yeah, that was so does approved. that one help you? Yeah, help we that's approved good. that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that one. That's a, that's a Pat approved tweet. <laughs> oh, I like that. We need to put that into a segment. Pat approved tweets. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I don't know, though. It's difficult because uh, there seems to be too many unforced errors here. Self-sabotage. You don't need to be doing this. You really don't. There's just so many things. Uh, I mean, there's so much Kamala policy that is uh, vulnerable Mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, to go over, to tweet about, to talk about, to hit her on. (laughs) This ancillary stuff like Taylor Swift endorsements. Oof, forget it. You know, it's like there there used to be a big thing when I was in Top 40 radio. You can't get hurt by what you don't play. Yeah, well, you can't get hurt by what you don't tweet either. So don't get hurt by tweets like that. You don't have to do that. There's no reason for it. And if you don't play rap music and you're a Top 40 <laughs> radio station... Just don't talk about the fact that you don't play top uh, the rap music. That's all. <laughs> you remember in the early 90s, it was a big deal. No rap, no hard rock, no sleepy elevator music. Mm-hmm. Why are you talking about the stuff you don't play? Talk about the stuff you do. <sighs> I like that. I like that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's when I uh, used to screen calls for the Glenn Beck radio program. And mm-hmm. one of the things I would teach those that would uh, take over that spot or fill in for me, it's... Uh, Nobody will ever hear the call you didn't put through to Glenn. <laughs> right. <laughs> if, right. If you have the slightest right. uh, 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 feeling that maybe this isn't going to work out, then don't put it through. Leave no it one out. No one will know. When in doubt, leave it out. There you go. Yep. Uh, that's all you have to do. Mm-hmm. So hopefully uh, that's where we'll go from here on. Yeah. But I doubt it. Yeah, we do have time here uh, for this Megan Kelly responds. Yeah, let's get, let's she, get to that. Let her respond to Taylor Swift for right. you, Donald. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> the reason she's voting for Kamala Harris is because of Tim Walz' LGBTQ stance. Okay, mm. so that, that's what Taylor Swift Do said. you know what Tim Walz has done on the LGBTQ front? Mm. Tim Walz... Let me, let me tell you what's going to happen, okay? Well, here's what's going to happen. A, a little girl sitting in Wisconsin who's maybe on the spectrum, maybe has acne, maybe is a little heavy set, mm. maybe feels upset because the parents are getting divorced, something like that, 
is going to find herself down a rabbit hole on Reddit. And her parents aren't going to know because they're going to divorce and they're not focused on her right now. And she's going to spend hour after hour on that thing. And Reddit's going to tell her she's actually a boy. And she's going to get sucked into this gender cult. And she's going to say, Mom and Dad, I want puberty blockers into cross-sex hormones, which will sterilize her and deprive her of all sexual pleasure for the rest of her life. And they're going to say, no, you're a girl. And she's going to say, but I want, to, I want top surgery, this benign thing. This double mastectomy where I'll have tubes coming out of me and I'll never breastfeed a child. I want that too, because I'm a boy. And they're going to say no. And she's going to go to a judge in Minnesota. Mm. And because of Tim Walz, the court will take custody of her, use the Medicaid funds in Minnesota to provide her all of those things, Mm -hmm. chop off her breasts, sterilize her with the puberty blockers into the cross-sex hormones. And when this girl inevitably comes to the conclusion that she didn't want any of this, that it only added to her problems, which were the divorce and the acne and the puberty and not any trans issue, who is she going to go to then? This is all because of Tim Walz. That's what Minnesota is doing right now to little girls and boys, taking custody away from the parents so that they can have these procedures without any loving parent there to help. And that's what Taylor Swift just endorsed for your children. So screw you, Taylor Swift. Yeah. Wow. She with a uh, pro Taylor Swift crowd there? <laughs> Jeez. That was weird. What a reaction. Where is she? It, where, what is that event? T- Anybody Tucker know? Carlson's thing. Oh, it's... Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Weird. That's uh, that's well, an interesting weird? reaction. But they booed her. I think they were booing Taylor booing Swift. Booing Taylor Swift. Hopefully. Okay. Just the okay, the the reaction of the audience is you, you uh, were thinking it okay. throws me. Right, right. Okay. Just stop reacting. Maybe just clap or wait, cheer. but that's a reaction. <laughs> you know what? Sit on your hands. Just listen to Megan yeah, speak. Just, yes. Don't respond. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. All right. More coming up. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. There's speculation now that that I hate Taylor Swift no, 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 no. tweet didn't no. come from Trump. No, that one came from Trump. That did. The O, okay. o and two, uh, O for two, did not come from Trump. I don't know. I got a text that, no, that okay. makes it sound like uh, it's a meme. But, All right. uh, I was hoping the other one was hacked or, you know, no, some I impersonating hate Donald, him. I hate uh, Taylor Swift from that did, Donald yeah, Trump. Yeah, that one did go out. That's yeah. 100% accurate. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Darn it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, also, it does look like uh, everybody is saying that Donald Trump was fired upon yesterday on the golf course. There was some uh, controversy over whether or not the guy actually shot at him now everybody's reporting yes he was shot at and secret service returned fire apparently not hitting him because he got into his black nissan and took off but they found him yeah that and was, he's in custody well, yeah you, you hear the uh, sheriff talk about how witness grabbed the license plate license mm-hmm. plate ran through database camera catches license plate yeah good guys catch bad guy and you're like ah. Damn, this technology actually did good. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. <laughs> That's way too much information. I know. Way too quick. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah, you kind of would think that maybe now after two assassination attempts, the Secret Service would be pretty, I don't know, highly sensitive hmm. to uh, you these thought Trump after appearances. One. You, you thought, would have thought yeah. after one. <laughs> But then the guy gets on the same golf course with him and starts firing at him. There was a shrub, Pat. How is that possible? There was a a shrub. Yeah, he's in a bush. He was in a bush. Yeah, he's in a bush. That's right. So first it was uh, sloped. Mm -hmm. Oh, and now it's bushes. Bushes. Yeah, you can't defend against bushes or sloped roofs. Can you you defend? No, I can't. No. You expect the Secret Service to? (laughs) No, no. I don't expect the Secret Service to do anything I couldn't do. No, of course not. Of course not. Hmm. So... (laughs) Does this guy go to trial, and does the truth ever come mm-hmm. out about uh, his motivation, background, how he got the weapon, mm. who his handlers are? I'm sorry, I threw that part in. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to know what's inside that GoPro. Want to know what's in the GoPro? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. There's a lot of things that need to come out about this. Because that's a sweet sniper's nest right there. Mm. 
That's a very, very good. <laughs> it's it's a fence with leaves <laughs> and and bushes and shrub, and the Secret Service did not see you, so it's yeah, a good incredible. one. Incredible. Yeah, Incredible. and so okay, so those bags hanging there, go back. Those have the ceramic tiles in it to, to, yes. as basically to, to make him shield. Uh, a shield from the Bullets. return fire. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. So he thought about it all. Yeah, he did. And then if you watch, because that video that we played, we don't have the full because it's ten mm. minutes long. Back in 2022, he'd been interviewed by Romania Newsweek. He talks about how when he went yeah, to yeah, we played that. Yeah, but the longer version oh. talks about oh. how. He has no military experience, which is why he could not do much to fight for Ukraine. Oh, but then I see mm. that. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. So, huh? Not too much mm. military experience. But How did he you get were... the gun? Mm. How did yes. he think to, to set up a sniper's nest, like you say there? Interesting. Uh, it's almost like he's. Wow. Has some military experience, or someone who does taught him, him how to do it. Mm. Huh. And again, I'm telling you, these act blue. Uh, lists. They, I'm, that's where they find these people. Mm. Just saying. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, all right. Well, Kamala Harris uh, was out speaking over the weekend, uh, and she she was brilliant, of course. Okay. Uh, as she always is. Uh, here's a little sample of that. Hello to all my divine nine brothers and sisters. Okay, what <laughs> accent are we on now? And my sorrows. Sorrows. <laughs> Ugh. Your what? <laughs> Sorority sisters. Oh, okay. And to all my HBCU brothers and sisters. <laughs> oh, back, and she's back to the cackle. Back to the cackle. Good. All right. So the cackle is back. And so is a new, uh, she's testing out a new accent. Yeah. Right? She's horrible. Oh, my gosh. Just can't even stand Oof. Look at her. <laughs> I just I want this election season over so badly, and I don't want well, to have I, to even think of her again. I want it to be over with her right. in a rearview mirror. That's what I'm saying. That would be nice, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was uh, in Pennsylvania over the weekend. <laughs> How are you feeling about Pennsylvania? Simple question. How are you feeling about Pennsylvania? I am feeling very good about Pennsylvania because there are a lot of mm. people in Pennsylvania who deserve to be seen and heard. That's why I'm here in Johnstown. Okay. And I will be continuing to travel around the state. So good. Ooh, wow. Just That's, good on her feet. powerful. You know? Yeah. So I'm sorry Riveting. that that reporter didn't give you the questions ahead of time like ABC News. I mean, that threw you the curveball of how are you feeling about Pennsylvania? <laughs> That's a tough one. Uh, That's a tough one. I, um, I'm feeling good because that's why I'm in Johnstown. Okay. Good job. You're good. <laughs> uh, and by the way, there was that uh, about 10, 15 minute interview in Johnstown that she did. We didn't send it in here, but oh my gosh, if you get a chance to watch her sit down with the reporter there in Johnstown, it was uh, 15 the local, minutes. The of, local news report. Yeah. 15 minutes. Really of bad. Word salad. That's why she hasn't done a one on one interview until now because mm-hmm. she knew it was going to be terrible. Everybody knew it was going to be terrible. Speaking of terrible, uh, Gwen <laughs> Walls, <laughs> the vice presidential uh, candidate's wife, mm. was brilliant over the weekend as well. This here is so here bad. she is. So bad. But I kind of liked it when she did this. Turn the page. Look at you her. like that? Okay, so I need you to be with me and practice oh, with God. me. What are we going to do? We're going to turn the page. Turn the page. Oh, pretty good. Do it again. We're going to turn, turn the page. The page. All right, Tim's right. From this administration, we're going to turn, turn the page. page. Yeah, I like it. So I'm going to be watching you. I like it. Because when I oh, see Wisconsin, uh-huh. and I'm one watching National Land TV, because it's a pretty important place in She's Minnesota, insane. help you practice with She's this. freaking insane. You just show me this. Turn the page. Right? Turn no. the page. Right. And you know Turn what else page. that looks like? Oh, gosh. What now? Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, good. Uh-huh. Bye-bye to this Bye-bye, administration. Donald Turn Trump. the page. Oh. Donald Trump. We already we turned that page. Four years ago. Now we need to turn the page oh, on Kamala Harris. 52 days. I mean, they, they don't make any sense. Yes, please. Days. Turn. Bye-bye, and look at the look at the the front of the podium there. A new way forward. What are you? I know. She's been there for four years. Keep in mind that they cop literally what? copied and pasted Golly. Joe Biden's campaign page yeah. to make it Kamala Harris's own. 
A new way forward. From the guy who's been, and the woman who's been in office for four years now. A new way forward. What? Turn the page. Yes, let's. (laughs) Joe, please put the, uh, just pause it, the first frame of this clip. Just pause it. This woman is, her eyes actually look crazier at the very beginning. uh, Where she is just, uh, she's got the crazy eyes. Hmm. Uh, so anyway, yeah, look, look at it. Oh my gosh, there they are. Oh, oh, that's a, that's a, that's a nightmare fuel right there. And in this entire time, we won't hopefully sit through this again, but that entire time, Tim Walls, as crazy as he is, mm-hmm. he was like, can you please stop? He was just like, he kept leaning. He was like, I'm going to talk now. Oh no. Oh, she's still going. We know who wears the pants in that family. It's Mr. <laughs> Mr. Gwyn Walls. Whew. And here's uh, Tim himself on Talking to Voters. This thing's going to be a battle for the next 52 days. Mm. It's going to be in rooms, one in rooms, just like this. It's going to be one door-to-door, call-to-call, $5 donation, Mm -hmm. trying to have that hard conversation in the produce aisle with the person you saw there at the grocery store (laughs) and ask, have you voted yet? (laughs) Hold on, I thought the Walls were the hey mind your own business couple. Yep. Don't be coming up on me in the produce section because if you want to have a chat about the cost of produce under the Harris administration, let's have that talk. But I thought it was mind your own business time from those two. <laughs> oh gosh, I want this over. Please make it stop. Uh, there is some good news though, and it comes from CNN. Incredibly, uh, <laughs> CNN compares twenty twenty. To what's going on right now? This would be which twenty-five. Cut, cut twenty-five. Twenty-five. Up by just seven points. Look, Kamala Harris is doing somewhat better than that at this point. Up by fifteen over pause, Donald pause Trump. That, pause but that, pause still, that. look at that. Just look, look, mm-hmm. look, look at that. In September of twenty twenty, Joe Biden was up twenty-eight points in this aggregate uh, calculation they have. Wow. And then in July, Biden was only up seven. But look at Harris. Right now, she's only up 15. And so when Joe Biden, you know, blew the doors off of Donald Trump in 2020, he was at plus 28 in this little formula they have. Interesting. Harris at only plus 15. So that's very okay. encouraging. Anyway, yeah. I think there's more to this. Where right. Joe Biden was back in 2020. So Kamala Harris would love extra support from young voters. Maybe Taylor Swift can deliver a few of those. <laughs> Beyond that, you know, we were talking <laughs> registration, registration, look. registration. Look at the key battleground oh. states of Pennsylvania and North okay. Carolina. Look. The Democratic edge over GOP voters at mm. this point in the process. In September of 2020, look at this. In Pennsylvania, Democrats had a 559,000 voter edge. Look where it's dropped now to. It's still They're still ahead, but it's just 169,000. You see the same trend in North Carolina where you see that drop from 415,000 to now an edge of just 128,000. Democrats still ahead, but Republicans have made massive gains in registration mm. over the past four years. Hmm. That's interesting. Wow. Mm-hmm. So this guy uh, seems to be trying to prove the point. Yes. Like week after week, he's giving hope to uh, Trump supporters. Sure is. Three. I'm just doing some math. This is Keith math. Mm-hmm. 81,000 votes. Uh, <clears throat> Joe Biden beat Donald Trump in Pennsylvania by 81,000 votes. It was 50.0. Wow, with a 559,000 Democrat registry uh, uh, advantage. Advantage, yep. And now we're over Republicans. And yeah. now it's a lot less than that. So five. It's like one fourth of that. Yeah. One third, one fourth, somewhere in there. Huh. Ah, that's yeah. interesting. Sure yeah. is. Very interesting. Ah. Uh, now, over on ABC, where uh, we've got, we shared that affidavit with you mm-hmm. from the ABC employee, the 10 year employee, that said that they uh, agreed to not fact check. Kamala uh, during the debate uh, and it's been proven that David Muir has 100% supported uh, Kamala Harris on his newscast all the stories he's done on her 100% of them have been positive compared to 93% negative toward Donald Trump well it didn't used to be that way necessarily he used to call out Kamala Harris Tim Walls and I are both gun owners. We're not taking anybody's guns away. So stop with the continuous lying about this stuff. In recent days, former Vice President 
Biden has said about executive orders. Some really talented people are seeking the nomination. They said, I'm going to issue an executive order. Biden saying there's no constitutional authority to issue that executive order when they say I'm going to eliminate assault weapons, saying you can't do it by executive order any more than Trump can do things when he says he can do it by executive order. Does the vice president have a point there? <laughs> Some things you can. Many things you can't. Let's let the senator answer. Oh, well, I mean, I would just say, hey, Joe. Instead of saying no, we can't, let's say yes, we can. No, no. <laughs> let's be constitutional. Yeah. Look, we got a constitution. Yes, we can. Wow. Wow. Joe Biden leaning on the Constitution. That, that's, <laughs> we're going way back in the archives, aren't we? <laughs> wow. Well, that shows you what the 2020 election cycle was like. Mm. Wow. Uh, then she got fact checked <laughs> by the troops. <laughs> ah. Well, I will tell you, I agreed with President Biden's decision to pull out of Afghanistan. Four presidents said they would, and Joe Biden did. And mm -hmm. as a result, mm -hmm. America's taxpayers are not paying the $300 million a day. We were paying for that endless war. Mm -hmm. And as of today, there is not one member of the United States military <laughs> who is in Watch active this. duty in a combat zone in any war zone around the world the first time this Wait, century. What? But let's understand. So where the f are we right now? <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. I love those guys. Yeah. Where the blank are we right now? <laughs> well, apparently, I don't know that we know their exact location, but they're in Iraq or Syria. Yeah, either right? Iraq or Syria, yes. And they're being fired on all the time. All the time. By drones, by rockets. They're, they're in combat zones. And so that was news to them. I love that video. They didn't get in trouble for that, I hope. I, I hope not. Yeah, I hope not. I hope too. not. Because that's... Uh, I mean, it's just fact. They're in combat zones. <laughs> She's such a liar. Uh, then she was also... Kabbalah was also fact-checked by Martha Raddatz. <laughs> this is shocking. I want to ask you... Same network, ABC. ...about her comments about the military. She said during the debate mm -hmm. this about the U.S. military. Let's listen. As of today, yeah, there is not one member of the United mm -hmm. States military who is in active duty so Martha's in a talking to zone, a in surrogate. any war zone oh, around the world the first time this century. Mm. No. Our fact checkers found that to be false, and I have a lot not of experience the debate, in that Martha. area as well. There are currently 900 U.S. military personnel in Syria, 2,500 U.S. troops in Iraq. Huh. All have huh. been under regular threat mm. uh -huh. from drones and missiles yeah. for months. We also have action huh. in the Red Sea. We also, every single right. day, the Navy SEALs, Delta Forces, special operators uh -huh. uh, can be part of any sort of deadly raid. Yeah. So why would she make that claim? Yeah, good question. Well, I think what's governor. important here, Martha, is that, that Kamala she's a liar. Harris, in contrast a liar. to Donald Trump, uh -huh. demonstrated herself to be commander in chief. What? We are in a world where no. there are all sorts of she, conflicts, and it's what? all the more reason oh, we need okay, somebody who's serious I can't. and who supports Stop. the military. And just remember, Stop. I can't. Well, she kept calling her out. Oh, God. did she? Y yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So if there's follow up, go ahead. Okay. Let's see the rest then. Mm -hmm. Uh, single day, the Navy SEALs, mm. Delta Forces, mm. special operators uh, can be part of any sort of deadly mm. raid. So why would she make that claim? What's important here, Martha? Well, I is, think what's important here, Martha, yeah. is that Kamala Harris, in this contrast to Donald to Trump, demonstrated herself to be commander in chief. We are in a world where there are all sorts of conflicts, and it's Jeez. all the more reason we need somebody who's serious and who supports the military. No, that wasn't the question. The governor, uh, the governor, excuse oh, me, but she said there you. is not one member of the United States thank military you, who is in active duty in a combat zone. That is not true. Right. You say she demonstrated her ability to be commander in chief, but did she not know about these people <laughs> in Syria and Iraq? Why would she say that? Look, that was a comment. Yeah. Uh -huh. That was a comment in a debate. I think the point what that she that was mean? trying to make what? was a broader point. And of course we have military in place mean? all around this country. That was a comment oh. in a debate. You don't have to tell the truth in the debate. <sighs> I mean... <laughs> don't... The words can't... I know! There are no words. I know. To describe what's going on here. It's 
absolutely astounding. The only thing missing from that, well, a couple, couple of things, is when Governor Healy or whatever her name is from Massachusetts, mm-hmm. when she said, uh, uh, you know, she she supports the troops, unlike Donald Trump or something like that. Okay, first of all, how can you possibly say that? That yeah, Donald Trump can't. doesn't support the troops. You can't. And then uh, Martha Raddatz, if she really wanted to twist the knife on her co-workers, she should have said... Um, uh, you know, since she wasn't fact checked during the debate, uh, we'll do that now. I would have been to nice. seen that little dig there. Yeah, would have been nice. Man, just terrible. What's important here, uh, Martha, to remember is that I am not here. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what they're saying. It's yep. just lying right to your face mm-hmm. on something so obvious. <laughs> but what are you going to say? Well, uh, Martha, she lied. She lied about that. Or the other thing you could say is she didn't know there are combat troops. Yeah, she's not prepared for this job because she has no right. clue as to what it means to be the commander uh, in chief. There's no way out of that. Yeah. There's no way out of it. Yeah. All right. Is your teen unsure what to do after high school? Well, then this new six week life and career skills course from Praxis may be just what you need. For the past decade, Praxis has helped nearly a 1,000 homeschoolers and recent high school graduates launch their careers without college through their mentorship program. Now they're bringing their expertise to teens with their new course, Discover. Discover is a six-week self-paced course designed to equip teens with essential life and career skills like building a professional network, making money by creating value, and developing a vision for the future. Plus, it includes a coaching call, a free resume review, and a copy of their book, Don't Don't Do Stuff You Hate. And now, for a limited time, they're offering listeners of our show 50% off the course price. Use the promo code UNLEASHED at checkout to get $374.50 off. Visit discoverpraxis.com slash blaze. Discoverpraxis, P-R-A-X-I-S. Discoverpraxis.com slash blaze today to learn more. Bad Gray Unleashed. Also, uh, here is Jake Tapper, probably no fan of ABC since uh, he left there. I'm not sure if he left by, uh, did he leave on his own volition? Or was he, was he fired? Anyway, here he is critiquing Kamala's debate performance. Mm. Vice President Harris began the debate mm. by punting the first question on the economy. Mm-hmm. Do you believe Americans are better off than they were four years ago? So I was raised as a middle class kid. And I am actually the only person on this stage who has a plan that is about lifting up middle the class middle class kid. and working middle people class of kid. America. Answer to everything, middle class Going kid. on from there, despite the economy being the number one issue facing the country, the sitting vice president generally mm. reverted to talking points about a few <laughs> of her policy proposals. Mm. Even Harris allies today are saying that she needs to talk more about what she will do for Americans if elected. Senator Bernie Sanders will be here in a second to talk about but more about the need for her to fill in some of those blanks. On the border, another vulnerable issue for Harris, Mm -hmm. she also dodged. Hmm. Would you have done anything differently from President Biden on this? So I'm the only person on this stage who has prosecuted transnational criminal organizations for the trafficking of guns, drugs, and human beings. What's that have to do with it? Okay, that wasn't the question. When (laughs) asked how she would break through the Israel-Hamas war stalemate, Mm -hmm. Harris said this. Okay. We need a ceasefire deal, and we need the hostages out. And so we will continue to work around the clock on that. Okay, but again. (laughs) (laughs) Right. How about that? Also, years back, uh, Jake Tapper on Kamala and Twitter banning Trump. I guess the question about you, you, I know you wrote to um, Twitter and the CEO, uh, Jack Dorsey, and asked him to take away the president's yeah. Twitter handle, his account. How is that not a violation <laughs> of free speech? Yeah. I mean, yes, it the is, The president Jake, has the same rights you know. that you have, that mm-hmm. I have, and how would that not just be a slippery slope where right. they Thank have to you. ban you know, half of the people on Twitter? Thank you. Huh. 
I've heard that argument, but but here's You've the heard thing, that Jake. Uh, first of all, what does that have to do with a, a corporation, which is what Twitter is, mm -hmm. um, it does not have the it has obligations, and in this case, Twitter mm -hmm. has terms of use policy, oh, and their terms of use um, dictate who receives the privilege of speaking on that platform oh, oh, and who geez. does not. And Donald Trump has mm. clearly violated the mm. terms of use, and there should be a consequence for that. Not to mention the fact that he has used his platform, being the president of the United States, mm. in a way that has been about inciting fear and potentially inciting harm against a, a witness to what might be a crime against our country and our democracy. And we don't have a democracy. For that reason, I do believe that he is that it's clear that mm. he has violated it's the clear. terms of use, and I'm asking that Twitter does what it has done in previous occasions, which is to revoke someone's privilege Unreal. Uh, because they have not, they've not lived up to the, to the advantages of the privilege. Wow. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. I mean, Marxists speak. Yep. Yep. And that's what she is. She's a Marxist. And in fact, when Trump called her that, she didn't deny it. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> that she was thinking, wait a minute, I was told I would not be fact-checked. Right. During this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how dare you accuse me? All right. On overtime, we're going to explore whether animals are actually being eaten by Haitian immigrants uh, in Ohio. We'll get into that, and then we'll see you back here tomorrow for Pat Gray Unleashed. This is Pat Gray Unleashed.